Sorry for the delay this evening. The live videoing wasn't working. Technical hitch. <laughs> what a beautiful sunny Tuesday it has been. It's good to count your blessings in times like these. Tonight the question is, how can we love our enemies? A man who had reached his 100th birthday was being interviewed by a reporter. What are you most proud of? The reporter asked. Well, said the man, I don't have an enemy in the world. What a beautiful thought, how inspirational, said the reporter. Yep, added the man, I outlived every last one of them. <laughs> Is that your approach in dealing with your enemies? Is it just to avoid and ignore them, hoping that you outlive and outlast them? Maybe you secretly hope and plan and pray for bad things to happen to them. Or maybe you gossip about them and turn your friends against them. However, in Luke 6, we read how to have a better attitude, a Christ-like attitude to our friends and foes. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the cornfields and his disciples began to pick some ears of corn, rub them in their hands and eat the grain. Some of the Pharisees asked, why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered them, have you never read what David did? When he and his companions were hungry, he entered the house of God and taking the consecrated bread, he ate what is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, the son of man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, he went into the synagogue and was teaching. And a man was there whose right hand was shriveled. The Pharisees and the teachers of, of the law were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. So they watched him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew what they were thinking and said to the man with the shriveled hand, get up and stand in front of everyone. So he got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, which is lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? He looked round at them all and then said to the man, stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was completely restored. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were furious and began to discuss with one another what they might do to Jesus. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by evil spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him, because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven, for that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who will treat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, 
What credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies. Do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. He also told them this parable. Can the blind lead the blind? Will they not both fall into a pit? Students are not above their teacher, but all who are fully trained will be like their teacher. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in someone else's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say, friend, let me take the speck out of your eye, when you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye? You hypocrites, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from the other person's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognised by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. Good people bring good things out of the good stored up in their hearts, and evil people bring evil things out of the evil stored up in their hearts. For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As for those who come to me and hear my words and put them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When the floods came, the torrent struck that house, but could not shake it because it was well built. But those who hear my words and do not put them into practice are like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. In history, people thought if they were following the law by not murdering or committing adultery that this made them good people. However, Jesus preaches this sermon in Luke 6 to show us that keeping the law is not so much about outward actions as inner attitudes of the heart. Whether we're interacting with friends or enemies, Christians or non-Christians, our attitude towards other people should be to love them. None of us have problems loving the friends and family members we get along with. It's the people and even family members or other Christians who seem to hate us and the people who are out to cause us harm and the people who spread lies about us that we have trouble loving. And so it is these people that Jesus focuses on in on in Luke 6. So how can you love your enemies? Can you think of someone you find it really hard to get along with? It might be someone who has done something to upset you, so you are fairly justified in your anger and resentment. However, Jesus calls us to love our enemies. Think about this person or these people and pray for them in the week ahead. Reach out to them by text, social media or a good old fashioned letter. How will you love your enemies in the week ahead? Thanks for listening. God bless you all. Bye.